Hello again, I am Blanty, and if you missed it, yesterday's video was a big honkin' 20 minute long dive into the newly released SteamOS distribution that made it officially compatible and supported for devices other than Valve's own Steam Deck at last. And I was showing off again and again, to my honest surprise, how SteamOS was kicking Windows' teeth in on an otherwise apples for apples comparison in a bunch of games. Same setting, same device, same everything except whether or not Windows or SteamOS was under the hood. And it turns out, yeah, Windows runs your game slow. Windows is bloaty, ugly, big pile of certification. But the SteamOS solution wasn't perfect. Right now, support for devices like the ROG Ally in SteamOS is preliminary. And while basically everything works, and works great, frankly, on the hardware side, there was one missing feature that was a make or break thing for certain games. The difference between playable and unplayable. And that's the fact that while under Windows, you can adjust your power mode from 9 watts to 15 watts and even a 30 watt max power mode, SteamOS doesn't let you do that. It's locked down to 15 watts standard performance profile by default, can't touch it. And that proved to be a problem for the likes of piggy games such as Star Wars Outlaws. Well, it would have been a problem, you know, except you can solve for that issue in about three minutes flat and completely unlock full power mode on the ROG Ally under SteamOS and give those problem games a massive kick up the bum. So, yesterday's video was trying to approach things from the perspective of a quote-unquote regular gamer, a gamer who just wants their crap to work, console style, plug and play, and is unwilling to get their hands a little dirty with some classic PC game fiddling, either because they're intimidated by the techie stuff, or they just don't want to have to fiddle with shit to get it working. One of the big selling points of SteamOS is its console-like experience. And while some of us are very happy to fiddle endlessly, like it or not, making life easy for those other people is a key thing to get SteamOS clawing out a larger and larger market share of PC gamers from the vile, ever more unshittified clutches of Windows, and that's good for all of us. So until SteamOS builds this feature in by default, it will remain a black mark against it. However, like I said, and like you might have been noticing on screen, uh, it's actually super easy to solve using just two bits of linked third-party software. The first is a thing called Decky. It's an add-on that's super popular with Steam Deck users and expands the functionality of the sidebar by letting you optionally install a range of little plugins to give users all kinds of extra control over features and functionality and you know, little mini apps and stuff like that. And while a lot of them are easily downloadable from within Decky itself, the one we need isn't. And this is where the Linux newbies will get worried. Because what we need is called Simple Decky TDP. It's detailed over at GitHub, and to install it, it is not a download and double click style thing like you might be used to. No, you'll need to do one of two things instead. Either download the compressed files, unzip them, and manually copy them to a specific folder in your device's drive. So a bit like modding a game, in other words. So if you've modded your games before, it's basically the same thing here. Or you can copy paste this string of commands into the terminal window, and that's scary, and it'll pull down and install automatically. That right there, that's the kind of Linux command line horse crap that drives regular users nuts. Whenever they have a problem, some Linux node comes along, oh, all you have to do is type in this string of commands that you don't even understand into the terminal, which you don't even understand, and it'll do stuff behind the scenes that you don't understand, and that's all very intimidating for someone who doesn't understand it. It is so obtuse to anyone not living neck deep in Linux for quite some time, and that scares people. But if you do have even a small clue about what's going on here, it is dead easy and very, very fast. One reboot later and the new plugin is in your SteamOS's sidebar, and from here you have significant amount of control over your device's power profiles. Your minimum and maximum allowed TDP, you can manually set a specific power profile. You can even set unique custom profiles on a per game basis. It is way more powerful than the choices you get in Asus's own software for the ROG LA uh, Windows native experience but also more complicated, and for someone new to this, more confusing, because uh, there's a lot of options there, and because it'll actually let me set a TDP way above what the maximum allowable power setting that the Windows app allows, you can potentially get yourself into trouble here. 
But again, it's not that complicated. It doesn't take much to get to grips with this. And there's guides online if you are still learning and need explainers for all the specific functions and acronyms and crap like that. In any case, this ain't my first radio, so I smacked it up to 30 watts, the otherwise known as the turbo mode, as it's known under Windows. And the difference is, as you might expect, night and day. From barely acceptable frame rates to really solidly smooth and consistently above a 30 FPS floor. Outlaws really is a pig of a game though, so we're still in low settings here with a very aggressive FSR 3-up scale. But with this extra headroom, I'm sure we can start fiddling with some custom settings and get it nice and consistent and looking a bit cleaner too, because the game doesn't look awesome in these settings. But for the sake of these tests, to make it really easy apples for apples comparison side by side, I stuck with the default settings I used for the Steam OS to Windows comparisons, so we're all nice and consistent. Now, I don't like to use the 30 watt mode on my ROG Ally unless I really need to. The device runs quite warm in that setting, the fans ramp up, and while the fan noise is remarkably well controlled on this device, and, and pretty tolerable frankly, I'd still rather do without it. And among the ROG Ally online community spaces, you'll find a lot of people, including me, tend to settle on an 18 watt custom power mode for the best balance of performance in high demand games and battery life and noise and heat. So let's smack Decky open, tab over to cross the simple ticket TDP, quickly pop down to 18 watts instantly, and there we go. We've lost a comparative fraction of our average frame rate, but now the ROG LA is running quieter and cooler, and if I'm untethered from power, I'll get noticeably more battery life. And this kind of thing is frequently a case in many games on this device. While 15 watts is sometimes borderline for the more aggressive games, the 30 watt option burns hotter without full benefit a lot of the time because the game itself is hitting a performance benchmark somewhere else that isn't necessarily tied to TDP power usage alone. So in this case, 18 watts is actually plenty to get that significant performance uplift we needed. And the nice thing about Simple Decky TDP is, compared to Asus's own power profile customization tools, it is way faster and way easier to dial in super specific wattages and test them out very quickly. So you can very easily really dial this in for each individual game, instead of what most of us do under Windows, which is just set up our single available custom profile at 18 watts and leave it there. But here, it's a moment's work to slide up or down a few watts either side, side to fine-tune performance perfectly for any given game at whatever settings you like. And in the case of Outlaws, it's the difference between playable and unplayable. As far as I'm concerned, before, with the defaults we were testing it, we were just able to nail down 30 FPS-ish. And it's fine for many people, I suppose. I mean, but for games like this, uh, that's absolute bare minimum as far as I'm concerned. Because this game isn't all creeping around hot bases like you've been seeing in the gameplay here. Sometimes it gets loud and fast, so we really need more overhead. And now we have it. Problem solved. So then I went back to Cyberpunk and retested with that. Uh, as a reminder, the settings I was testing with for the last video are not the settings I would usually use for this game on this device. But for the sake of very easy comparisons over a range of games for apples to apples stuff, as we keep saying, I was using the default medium settings. And in Cyberpunk, while the ROG handily outperformed the same settings under Windows, it was still frequently too close to 30 FPS for my personal taste. This is a game I always run at 18 watt power profile mode on my ROG Ally under Windows, where I use custom settings to target 45 FPS. And under SteamOS, even with the default medium settings, untweaked, unrefined, unfiddled with, we're basically there already. The difference between 15 watts and 18 watts TDP here is in the order of an extra 10 FPS, or basically 30% uplift in other words. And it takes the game from base level playable to very comfortably smoothly playable, right in that sweet spot. Because there's a damn good reason even the Switch 2 port has a performance mode that targets 40 FPS, not the common 30 versus 60 we're so used to seeing on the quality and performance modes on console games. The difference in feel between 30 FPS and 40 FPS is significant, and you save yourself all the extra power you would need to get to 60 in the first place. So yeah, that's the big issue for SteamOS on the non-Steam Deck devices solved. One plug-in, one line of terminal code to instantly install it, now the only remaining issue is PC Game Pass, of course. But even there, a lot of people use devices like the ROG Ally as secondary gaming devices. So while it's a mild bummer you can't use PC Game Pass if you're running SteamOS on your handheld, it's not necessarily a deal breaker because we can just play those games, those Game Pass games, on our main rigs. And everything else remains available and working better than ever before on these devices under SteamOS instead of Windows. So yeah, that, that's, a, that's a deal I'm not too upset to be making, really.
Thanks for watching. Hopefully this has been useful to you. Uh, I am Blunty. We'll catch you next time. Thank you as always to the patrons. Uh, who's above me your support is fantastic. Remains active after several minutes after the